Hi, this is Ms. Cooper with a second tutorial on how to do isometric drawing. Now we've already learned some basics like a cube in our first video. If you don't remember what that looked like, um, hopefully this will jog your memory. This is the paper I used from the front one where we learned how to make a square go backwards in space. We also talked about how we do not use horizontal lines and how we measure very carefully when we're drawing our figures. So let's move on to something a little more complicated. Now I'm going to use Sharpie so that it shows up well in the video, but if you're not confident, that's totally okay. You can just use a pencil instead and go back over it later if you need to. Let's start with this letter E type shape. Um, now this particular copy doesn't have a lot of very strong lines on it, but we can still see that we have our vertical lines and we have our horizontal lines. These are not technically horizontal on here, but for your shape, they would be. And these do extend back in space the other ways too, if you were trying to flip it around. Um, so you would end up with your shape going backwards into space and having a top, like this top one right here. Now, this isn't really what we're focusing on right now. What we're doing right now is we are working on this E. So if we count how many triangles tall this letter E is, it is about one, two, three, four, five triangles tall. So we will start by putting its side in here and making it five triangles tall. So let's count one, two, three, four, five triangles down. This will be our height. Um, now, it's not really broken down properly because it's sideways on here to show what it looked like. Um, let's make it about four triangles wide. Let's do that. So let's say we've made it four triangles wide. We're going to go one, two, three, four wide. This is the bottom. And it's only about one triangle tall, we can see. So uh, we will add one triangle for the height. Then let's take it back into space. We can see it's about one triangle wide at the corner here. So what we're going to do is we're going to form that corner. I'll put a dot so we can see where we're going. We will connect that dot. Then it's one triangle up, and then we go out to the end, which we can already see. So let's go one triangle up, and then out to the end along this vertical line. Now let's move on up again. It's another one up, another one in. To finish this E shape, we need to go up one more. We need to go out to the vertical line. And then we need to extend it upwards one. So it looks like we are going to connect it back here to finish forming our letter E. So see how we turned it sideways in space and we don't have any of these horizontal lines because we don't use those when we're doing isometric drawing, when we're in the basics. Now let's take it back into space. I think I'm only going to take it one cube back. So I'm going to mark out one cube backwards, and then I'm going to do the same at the top, and then I can complete it. Now I've completed the side of this part of the E. Now let's finish the top. So I'm going to make it one cube wide again, or one triangle wide, and connect it. Now sometimes it's easy to think that we're done, but we're actually not because some parts of this E are still not going back out into space. We're still missing these little tines kind of right here if we're thinking about it like a fork. Now the part that throws people off sometimes is the fact that we won't be able to see the entire top of this side. We take it one triangle back in space, but we can't see the end of it. That's fine. That's totally okay. We're going to do the same thing with this bottom part. We're going to take it one triangle back in space using the grid. And we can't see the end of it, but that is totally fine. That is okay. Sometimes people feel the need to try to connect it because their brain is telling them that something's wrong even when it's not, so they'll do something like this. Um, but now we've made something that doesn't quite make sense, so we don't really want that line there. We want to just complete it. If it helps, sometimes the shading will make the form make a little bit more sense. So if we were to kind of label our tops, our sides, and our front by adding value to them, 
sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to understand what we're looking at. So now if we add the value, we can see that these are the top sides, this is the very side, and this is the actual front of our shape. Sometimes that is helpful. Now let's move on to objects that might have holes in them. So I'm going to scoot my paper up just a little bit. Let's say we are trying to draw some kind of cube, but it has a hole in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make mine three triangles tall because that's how tall this one is. So I'm going to start with my middle here. So I'm going to go one, two, three triangles down. Now the front I think should be about four triangles wide. Let's make the front go this way this time. So I'm going to go out one, two, three, four triangles and complete the front. If we have three triangles for height here, we need three triangles over here. And then we simply connect the dots and it is four boxes wide. So all of that math checks out. Now I'm going to add some depth to it before we really tackle the front because this is going to be overall kind of a, a box shape. So I'm going to go out one, two, three lines. It's also three tall, so I need to go one, two, three tall and one, two, three wide to match up my sides. Now I'm going to take it back into space and it's going to end up touching this E shape, but that's fine. We're just practicing here. So now if you want to add a hole to it, but still make that hole go back into space, you need to do a couple things. One, if you look at carefully, all of these lines are parallel to each other, meaning that they don't cross, they don't go on diagonals, they never will cross at any point. So we have to make sure that they are parallel on this one too. Let's start with the easy ones, our vertical lines. They go about one box out from the side. Now we simply connect these by remembering to make sure that the angles of these lines go along the grid and match the lines that are already up here. Now to make it go backwards into space. It has a hole, but we want to show that it has some depth. The best way to do that is to think about what direction we are not missing, because remember our lines go vertically and they go on two different diagonals for them to crisscross. We have the vertical, we have the one going kind of up into the left, so now we need the last one that goes up and to the right. We will start at the corner and draw that line. And simply drawing that line gives our object that depth and shows that it goes back into space. Now what if we're on a different side? How would this work then? Let's say there's a hole in this side of the box. We use the same idea to figure out what way our line is going to be inside. So if we have our vertical line and we have one that follows the other line on the grid, we need to complete this snowflake, right? So if we have the top part and we have this part, we're missing the line that goes this way. So we should add that in. Now, last one, let's say we have a hole and it is going down into space. Maybe we're drawing a picture of a pool or something like that. Well, we have a line going this way. We have the line that goes this way. So now we need our vertical line to complete this. So it's not going to drop down over here. It's always going to drop down from a corner. So we will take that down into space like so. So if you ever need to draw little snowflakes off to the side to figure out what lines you need to draw, that is absolutely okay. Just remember that it always comes from a corner when you're drawing it so that you put it into the right spot. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for watching and let me know below if you have any questions.